Hey guys, welcome to another Raspberry Pi video. The last video I did is why I picked up the Raspberry Pi 3B and what it can do. If you haven't watched it, the link is in the description and at the ending of the video. In this video, I'll be doing an HDMI mod to the Smarty Pi Touch case because I believe you should still be able to use the HDMI input if you like without pulling the Pi out of the case. The Smarty Pi Touch case is a really nice design, perfect for mounting and a great way to make it portable. My only complaint is the fact that it blocks the HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi. My concern when I first got the Pi, I wasn't sure if it can support the HDMI port and the screen plugged in at the same time. Having that HDMI port blocked on the case only made me more concerned it really didn't work. So I did some research and I found out you can't have both the screen and the HDMI port working at the same time. However, you can do some changes in the boot config file that can disable the display port and would automatically enable the HDMI port. I still haven't found a solution to turn the touchscreen backlight off yet. If you're using an HDMI port for long periods, I guess you can unplug it. I'll eventually be building a USB mini power switch for both the Pi and the screen. So my question is, why was the HDMI port blocked on the Smarty Pie Touch case in the first place? For my needs, if I want to go play my retro games on the go or in another location, it is nice to have the touch screen to do so. When I have it on my desk, I like to play games on my monitor, and if I'm playing on my Xbox, I like to use the touch screen monitor for my website or do some tweaks. This means I change from the touch screen to the monitor a lot. What I did was I picked up a couple of things to make this possible. Since the Raspberry Pi HDMI port points down at the desk, there would be no way to connect the HDMI cord to the Pi unless the touchscreen was facing down. I didn't want to do that for the fact the screen over time can get scratched. I picked up a 90 degree HDMI male to female adapter that will point the HDMI female port on the case directly out and not pointing down at the desk. Next thing I got was expensive, but it's about time I got one. I can use it for other projects in the future. I picked up a Dremel 8220 cordless. This will be needed to cut the plastic to fit the adapter. I also got the Dremel accessories kit that has the plastic cutting wheel to make this possible. Since I've never used this Dremel before, I tested it on an ice cream pail to see if the cutting disc would wobble or make straight cuts. So I marked the points I wanted to cut out. I was concerned about the one screw hole that attaches the screen to the case. I was also worried about the case cover if I would be able to use it again. After making the cut, I checked to see if everything would fit. Unfortunately, I still had to do some more cutting. I finally made the size I needed and I was able to fit the HDMI adapter in almost perfectly. I still needed to do some tweaks so I'd be able to use the screw mount yet. I had to cut some of the HDMI adapter case to fit the screw head. I even had to cut the screw to make it shorter using the grinding wheel from the Dremel kit. Next up was the case cover. I needed to take some of the plastic off the case cover to make room for the HDMI adapter but still be able to connect it to what was left of the lip on the case. I made the size I needed and it fits perfectly and stays in position. This mod actually looks pretty good and I was able to use the screw on the case cover without an issue. So this is what it looks like when it's complete. It looks like it was part of the design on the case. I'm actually able to use the back cover without cutting it. So next up I will show you in real time how to jump from the screen to the HDMI port and back. I have a VNC open on my Raspberry Pi using the HDMI port so it's enabled on the HDMI at the moment. I just want to show you this without pointing it at the camera that way you can see it better. The terminal, you can open this terminal up by quitting emulation station or just going into the desktop and being able to use the terminal there. Either way, the terminal is used on both sides. So you're going to have to type in sudo nano boot config exactly as you see right here. And just hit enter. You will see 
when you scroll down you'll find frame buffer width and height now you'll see by default the hashtags on frame buffer now I'll explain these hashtags after but I want you to write display underscore default underscore LCD equals zero you don't have to add this ignore LCD but you can if you want um, this here is just to let me know on what the heck it is. As you can see, as it says remove hashtag to change settings. Now, these hashtags, when the operating system looks through the boot config, it ignores everything that has hashtag in front, so it won't read what you have for a command. So by default, right now as you can see it says display default LCD zero. This means that it disabled the LCD port on the Raspberry Pi and that automatically enabled the HDMI to work. If I want to change the resolution on the touch screen, uh, I have the frame buffer width 1100 and the height by 669. Um, this is perfect in between like um, being zoomed in or being really small so you can still see the text and it looks better. If I want to switch from HDMI to the touch screen I will remove this hashtag to enable frame buffer width because this frame buffer is for the touch screen and we want to disable this line of code just by putting the hashtag in front of that. So now this won't um, deactivate that LCD port. The LCD will show and the HDMI will not. Alright, so there's the modified case. As you can see, the HDMI cord is in here. It's actually traveling all the way over to my Xbox One X. And as you can see, it says there's no signal. And the tablet's off. So by default, if you do what I'm doing, this will turn on first. And that will just go black. Showing you that there is a signal. Here, I just plugged it in. As you see, showing that there's a signal but nothing with display. As I mentioned, you don't have to go into uh, the ports here and go into your virtual desktop. You can just quit emulation station and then you'll end up at the terminal. So as you can see, the frame buffer that is what its resolution is currently on the tablet. We want to put a hashtag in front of that because we don't need it for HDMI. And we want to activate display default LCD zero. This, like I said, will disable the um, LCD port on the Pi. Like so. We want to activate it by removing the hashtag. We want to deactivate these by adding the hashtag. Hold control, O to right. Hit enter. Hold the control X and it will bring you back to the Pi um, terminal. Just type in sudo reboot. So typing in sudo reboot when you hit enter, this is the behavior of what you'll see. The resolution will be disabled on here and um, same thing goes with the um, LCD and it will automatically show up on your TV through the HDMI. There we go. It's on the on this TV here, as you can see. So again, if we want to switch back to the LCD here, all we have to do is just quit emulation station, or like I said, just go into the terminal in the desktop. Either way, as long as you get into the terminal to add this line, then you can. So we're at the terminal now. So again, with the boot config, like I'm using the arrow keys because it remembered what I wrote. You see I've done this quite a bit <laughs> and just hit enter again by frame buffer width just move my arrow keys down to it remove the hashtag because we want to enable this width and height for that touch screen and we want to disable this code here so that way it reactivates oh crap reactivates that um, LCD port Hold control O to the save. I will zoom into the bottom so you can see that. Okay, so you can see the bottom there. I'm going to hold control O to right. You can kind of see it. It says file name right uh, boot config.txt. Hit enter. And now it wrote to it 65 lines. Hold control X to bring it up that. Hit sudo reboot. And just type in sudo reboot. And this is what it looks like.
pretty easy. The HDMI still works for audio. See if that's not a problem. As long as you don't switch to TV. Or if you have it plugged into your stereo amp or whatever. I hope you guys liked the video and this helped you out in a way. I have another video coming up with a small fan that goes on the heat sink. This thing is 15mm by 15mm. It's small. So I'll find out if this thing actually blows air or it just blows period. So keep an eye out for that video. Anyways, drop a like and share. Have yourselves a great day and see you on the next one.